Hey everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at this Saris Freedom 2 bike platform rack here on our 2020 Toyota RAV4. So if you're looking for a bike rack that is a bit more affordable and if you want a little bit of adjustment on your bike rack, this may be an option for you. It doesn't have the premium features that other more modern bike racks have like a tilt away or a fold up feature, but this is nice and simple and it has an impressive frame mount, which I kind of like. So first we'll take a look at the way our bike is mounted to this bike rack. So we have two wheel straps. Those are holding our wheels down. And then we have this frame mount. So notice how that frame mount can be adjusted. We'll look at this one on this other side. It can go up, it can go down, it can go around to accommodate your different frames. And this is nice, especially if you have an alternate frame bike, like a women's bike or a children's bike, or possibly even a step through bike, because then you don't have to hold it up by the top tube like the traditional hook would. But when you wanna take your bike off, you would start at the wheel straps actually. So to do so, you press the button right over here and then you pull the strap out. One thing I did notice though with the Saris Freedom was it's kind of unwieldy just to maneuver that strap. It's not impossible, but it's just a little bit different if you're not used to it. So that might be something you'll want to consider, especially with how you, the best way to do so is to use two hands to remove that strap. But once your wheel straps are disengaged, you can then go over here to the middle of your bike and make sure to support your bike as you do so. It is nice that this has a little bit of a hold on that frame, even when you have that strap disengaged but it's still nice to give that bike a little bit of support once you drop that frame mount down. Now, once you have it down, one thing you can actually do is just pull this out and just tilt this down. That way, especially since this has a weight capacity of 60 pounds per bike, you won't have to lift it as high to clear that mass. You just have to go up just a little bit and over, and then you're ready to go on a bike ride. So this will be ideal for your heavy electric bikes when you want something with a simple design, but you also need something that has a little bit of extra weight capacity. So we'll put these straps back in because even though your bike is off, I do recommend putting those straps away just so they're not flapping around as we drive around. Coming over here to the front, let's get that frame strap put away too. Now this can accommodate wheelbases of up to 48 inches. You just loosen these knobs and then you slide the cradles back and forth. Now as to that, speaking of cradles, this does have a capacity of 2.25 inches. So if you have your wider tires, this probably won't be the best option for you. There is the Saris Freedom though that is available in the fat bike version. So that's gonna have wider cradles. So just remember if you have a wider tire, you can choose that one instead of this one. But if you don't have wider tires, this is perfectly fine too. So we're gonna leave it in this position because this can't tilt the width. But with this folded down just like this, I've noticed here on our RAV4, we still have clearance between our hatch and our mast. So that means we can just get into our hatch, grab whatever we need. You do have to maneuver around the bike rack, but that's perfectly fine. It's still nice to see that we can access our hatch. Now the downside is you are going to have to take your bikes off. So just keep that in mind when you have to plan around that and take some minute as well as some efforts or energy to lower the mast and take your bikes off. Okay, so we'll take some measurements just to see how this fits here on our RAV4. I'm gonna take a look at the length added to the back of your SUV. So measuring from our bumper to the furthest point, which is gonna be right where that strap is or that lever for that strap, and it's going to sit at about 23 and a quarter inches away. So it's nice and compact, that's nice to see. 
But whenever you're backing into your garage or parking into a tight spot, just don't forget that you have a bike rack as well as bikes behind you. We'll also take a look at ground clearance. So ground clearance will be measured right over here underneath where the cradles are. And you have a ground clearance of 16 and 3 quarter inches. Now ground clearance underneath our shank, underneath the adapter, is going to be 9 and 3 quarter inches. So the Saris Freedom has an impressive shank rise. Since our hitch receiver here on our RAV4 is kind of low to the ground, you would be concerned about ground clearance, especially with other hitch accessories. So this means when you go over steep inclines like your driveways or your hills, your bikes are actually gonna be sitting almost eight and a quarter inches above the ground, a bit more than if they were on a straight across platform rack. So that's nice. That is a nice feature they have right over there. Okay, since this isn't fold up, your most portable position will just be with this mass down. So you aren't going to um, lessen the um, length added to the back of your vehicle. It is nice to see on the RAV4 this doesn't cover anything. Our rear window is completely visible, as are our taillights. Now our backup camera sits right over there, so that's not in the way of anything. And our license plate is completely visible as well. As for how this fits into our hitch, this has an inch and a quarter shank with a two inch hitch adapter. This has an anti-rattle bolt as well as a lock. So it is nice to see that you can lock your bike rack up just to keep it a little bit more secure. And I use a socket wrench with a three quarter socket just to tighten that bolt down. I recommend you do the same. That's gonna be a lot easier and faster to do that way. But with the anti rail bolt, you can see as I shake this side to side, just to mimic the road stress and road vibration, I'm mainly moving the car, showing that even with that adapter, most of our rattle is taken out, which is great. So my final thoughts about the Saris Freedom bike rack is it's a nice compact bike rack. If you're looking for something that doesn't take up too much space in your garage, this might be a good option for you. This also has a really high weight capacity of 60 pounds per bike, which is great for your heavier electric bikes. Now, if you're looking for nice ease of use features like tilt away or fold up, this does not have that. So you may wanna consider that. We do have other options as well. The Swagman E-Spec is at the same-ish price point with that great weight capacity as well. And it has some locks integrated into it. We also have the Kuat Transfer, which you can tilt down as well as carry heavy bikes on if you get the two inch version. But all in all, this does fit on our RAV4. We do have access to our hatch with this folded down and we get pretty good ground clearance, even though our hitch receiver is on the low side. So that was a look here at our Saris Freedom 2 bike platform rack on our 2020 Toyota RAV4. Here you see it out on our test course. First, we'll go through the slalom, which will show you the side to side action, such as making turns or evasive maneuvers. Next, we'll show you the alternating speed bumps, which will show the twisting action, like you might see going over uneven pavement or hitting a pothole, or maybe riding over a curb. And last but not least, we'll go over the solid speed bumps, which will show you the up and down action, such as going through a driveway or parking lot. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action. This simulates turning corners or evasively maneuvering. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Once we get to the full speed bumps, we'll see the up and down action. This will be just like driving in and out of a parking lot, parking garage, or driveway.
This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then on to our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or uneven pavement. And last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway. Here it is on our test course. First is the slalom area, which simulates side-to-side -side action, like turning the corners or invasive maneuvers. Next are the alternate speed bumps, which show you the twisting action, like hitting a pothole, road debris, or hitting a curb. Finally, we are at the solid speed bumps, which show you up and down action to simulate a parking garage or coming out your driveway. Here you see it out on our test course. First is the slalom, which shows the side-to-side -side action to simulate turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next are the alternating speed bumps, which show you the twisting action such as hitting a pothole, road debris, or going over a curb. Finally, we will finish with the solid speed bumps, which show the up and down action to simulate a parking garage or coming out of a driveway. Here it is on our test course. First is a slalom area which simulates side to side action like turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next are the alternating speed bumps, which show you the twisting action like hitting a pothole, road debris, or hitting a curb. Finally, we are at the solid speed bumps, which show the up and down action to simulate a parking garage or coming out of the driveway.